Hello everybody. Today we got something special today. Today I have the Lumix GH6 from Panasonic and I'm here to give a full review of this after owning it for about a month. So I've been trying to make a review for this camera for a while now and every single time uh, has been different. Uh, one, I wanted to try to get some work in and, and I did, but then I went on vacation, which I, I thought this would also be another great idea to show how it is as a travel camera and then came back and then I caught COVID afterwards. So that put me out of commission for a little bit, but it also gave me time to gather my thoughts about this camera. And essentially I wanted to sort of look at this and I don't want to give anybody's expectations uh, astray. I am not looking at this camera, nor am I going to review this camera from the perspective of using this as my main camera. This is in no way, shape or form going to be replacing the Canon C70. I will give my thoughts about it as a video, as well as potentially a cinema camera as a C70 owner. But just getting this away, this is not replacing my Canon C70. Uh, and we'll get into that later. And also I wanted to be very, very thoughtful about this video in particular, because there's quite a few of you who have been following me for a while. A lot of y'all probably started following me during my Blackmagic Pocket days, some of you from my R5 days, and recently the C70 days. But there's some of y'all that have been around since I was a GH5 owner, when I really, really started doing my YouTube channel seriously, which is like the very, very beginning. And so there's a lot of history with me between Panasonic. A lot of good memories and then there's also been some not so good memories um, and that's one of the other reasons why I wanted to take my time with it because one of the last Panasonic cameras I reviewed uh, there was a lot of there was well of let's just say constructive criticism but people uh, had a lot to say about it and that was of course the S1H which you of course can uh, look at it in the description below as well as I'll leave a link up there as well so I really wanted to see it now I guess I should start off by saying why I got this camera and why I got this camera instead of something like the R5C which would be a good hand to go with the C70 which is true uh, and the answer is is I wanted a camera that I can just pick up and shoot without any hassle, without any fuss. And that's where I'll start off with this review. Just my time with this, which is again, over a month now. I have to say this out of any camera that I have ever came across is probably the ultimate grab and go camera. And so I give a lot of praises to Panasonic for what they were able to put and compact into this camera. This is the first time where I literally feel all I need is a lens, a microphone for better audio and an ND. Now, we'll get to of course why you would definitely need some indies especially some serious indies later and but that's it i don't feel the need to have like an army of batteries like, like i had with the black magic pocket cinema camera days or figuring out how to get a cage and a rig system to put v-mount batteries on and run it off that way so i can run hours and hours in time the fact that the batteries are pretty decent. They're from if you're shooting in the more compressed codecs, so H.265 and H.264, uh, it's got a pretty decent runtime of like an hour and a half, which I feel is pretty decent compared to, say, a Canon C200, which I owned, used to own, sold it. That would give me 
maybe uh, an hour. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe t an hour on a BPA-30. Uh, and then there is, of course, the R5Cs that gives you uh, maybe 50 minutes of runtime. And of course, the infamous pocket cinema cameras that if you're lucky, you may get 30, 40 minutes of battery runtime. So in the world, it's a like battery power this as you know prime as the you know previous gh4s and gh5s no but it's also doing way more it's doing a whole lot more to give you a better image and it still does a decent runtime in my personal opinion even though it's only an hour and a half i love the fact that this port right here this 3.2 type c port is here and what makes it so fun is that I could just put this in the car and I can plug a type C cord into my car and just plug it in and I'm driving to my location and it's charged if I'm going I'm filming and in the case of how I'm shooting I'm just again it's just grab and go I'm just going in getting series of shots I'm not doing long takes where I'm sitting here and planning and sit in planning hours uh, and just setting it on a tripod and just letting it roll. That's that's not what this I'm using this for. So I'm using this as I want to go. I want to go shoot something, and that's how I use it. So I decided I'm just gonna walk today and just sort of see how the GH6 is gonna work. And this is one of the things I absolutely love about the GH6 is the fact that this is such a grab and go camera. Right now, the only thing I have is this lens, the variable ND because we are using the dynamic range booster and we are using uh, the simple Rode uh, video micro, like a $60 microphone. So this is sort of what we're sort of testing out right now, sort of just, just the go and grab and go because I think this is one of the best things about it because I could tell right now my skin tones are exposed properly um, none of my highlights are blown out and I just love the ability to just to go and just film things so that's what we're kind of sort of testing out right now and just sort of seeing how this goes so we'll definitely uh, definitely have to get back and just just to see uh, get back to you guys to see how things are going and in that format where I'm only sh shooting 20 seconds at a time, 30 seconds, two minutes, five minutes tops. Um, and then anytime I'm not shooting, I turn the camera off. It's a nature of mine, just of how I film, turn the camera off. So I'm actually running, they will shoot for at least on and off for about two to three hours. And what's cool is by that time, I'm usually switching locations. I hop on the car, I plug it in, and I get, by the time I get to my next location, I'm all, I got like three, at the very least three bars back and I can start filming again. I have, I, I have yet felt the need to feel like I have to buy a secondary battery. I probably will buy a secondary battery, but I don't feel the need to do it. And also just another design is of course, this screen right here. Uh, one, this screen is actually pretty bright. Um, it's not the brightest, but it's actually, it's completely viewable in direct sunlight. Uh, when you set it to the brightest, uh, settings, which I have, I can aim it directly in the sunlight and I can still see what I'm filming. But what I love about it is that yes, it's a fully articulating screen, but then there's the tilt up like here. Because someone like me, who's six foot, six one-ish, most of my talent is usually here. So I'm usually filming, holding it like this. So now I can line up directly, whereas sometimes when I'm shooting here and I'm looking here, my, my axis is kind of off. And it also just helps with stability where I can just look here. It's, it's like golf. And it's like any sort of sport where you have to aim, when you can just keep your line of sight uh, on point, it just makes it easier and a better quality grade. And I really love that. Now, one, the complaint I had with 
the S1H, which this is based off of. The same, the, the same problem is here that I found in the S1H, which is when I do this and I flip this out all the way and then I do this, the, the tilt screen doesn't flip. Meaning when I do, when I flip it like this, when you're doing a selfie for yourself, the image doesn't fully flip. It's, it goes back into normal rotations. The moment you do this, it works. But for some reason, when I do this, it doesn't, it doesn't flip. So it's the same issue I had in the S1H that I brought up and it's still in here. So uh, I hope that they fix that bug uh, in this soon. So, but outside of that, I love the design and the layout of this camera. I absolutely love, like I've never had such a well thought out like everything that you can think of is here. They've really thought about some little details right here. One, there's a leveler, there's a freaking leveler. Canon, I know you finally got it with the R5C, but Canon, there's an actual leveler here. Please, can we get this in the C70 and some of your cinema cameras, your more higher end cinema cameras and not just the R5C? Or hell, put it in even in your uh, stills cameras. We all would appreciate a good leveler. And this is an amazing leveler system. I love it to be able to see when you're, you know, going on. Thank you, Panasonic, for that. The fact is it's got waveforms, it's got shutter angles, you know, things that Sony is missing from their so-called cinema camera, the FX3. It's here, you know, real professional videos. There's even one that I didn't even, I didn't even think about it until somebody, I saw another YouTube video that pointed this out. Uh, there's a symbol right here. I, I, you won't be able to say, see it, but there's a symbol right here. And that symbol is to tell you where the sensor plane is. That when you want to basically measure how far the sensor is sitting from your subject, this gives that you can set it right here and you can measure it and get you know so you can know where you can set your focus points little details these it's these little details that i absolutely love about this camera the fact that it's weather sealed uh i mean i could i just could go grab it and with this lens I'll, I'll get to this lens in it with the combination of this lens and this you got a fully weather sealed body and of course on the bottom we got not only the regular quarter 20 mount that you would get, but there's also a locking pin at the bottom. Canon, again, can we get that in something like the R5C? Well, they didn't put it in there. It's great that that's there. It's just these little details that Panasonic thinks of that I am super, super happy with this camera. In terms of the design, it's pretty much outside of the fact that there's no built-in in these, which I get because of IBIS. And I'll get to IBIS in a second. So I'm not, it's just with what we're gonna go right into talking about soon, which in terms of image quality, in terms of latitude performances, I just I just wish there was some built-in in these, but it was a choice between Indies and IBIS, and there's no way they were going to sacrifice IBIS for indies so it's a shame but i'm just again outside of that and then again this one flaw where the, the screen won't rotate this is a 10 out of 10 in terms of designs in terms of a body design but of course we can't go in and we can't talk about image quality and i i'm not here to give you specs i'm here to give you experience so i use this on a wedding and as basically not as a camera that in the event that something just randomly happens, because normally my C70 is on sticks and it's on like a 70 to 200, getting either some tights or some tight up shots. So while that is happening, I typically like to come grab the GH6 and just go in and get some really quick shots that way. Maybe I'll run around, grab some decor shots. It's a lot easier to move and get some smooth uh, shots on the GH6 versus 
me having to rig up the C70 on a gimbal and getting shots that way. But it's also, I gotta talk about the quality. The fact that this also shoots, you know, 4K at 120 frames per second, which is amazing. But then I can also get that uh, 240 frames a second and really, really slow that down. It's awesome. I was uh, using that when I was on my Disney trip. And then at the wedding, I was uh, slowing it down as well. It was definitely a great little tool to have, especially when it's something you could just go in and grab. And of course, we can't talk, go in without talking about the fact that this shoots ProRes, which is amazing when you're trying to do, when you got quick turnarounds, or you just simply have a client that maybe wants to do the editing itself and you wanna just hand the files off. ProRes is so much easier. It's a more universal codec, so I'm happy it's here. Having said that, I start to find that I don't use it as often. I've come to find that the H.264, not the H.265, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about that later. The H.264 files, I find, I love them. They're, they're just as easy, but you get to use them um, a lot longer on your media files, but also they don't burn through the battery nearly as fast as ProRes, which I, I, I expected something like this. Because uh, for those of you that may not be aware, ProRes is a very processing consuming codec, to the, uh, which is why it, most cameras don't put it internally because it drains the battery so fast. You, and you could see it's whether they're using BPA 30s or Sony uh, MPF batteries, especially well, like the Atomos recorders, ProRes drains batteries quickly, which is why you really want to use something like a V-mount when you're using shooting stuff like ProRes. It's because of the power consumption that I do use it, but just not that often. I really do it when I like to shoot 5.7K at normal speed. Just to out, uh, just maybe once or twice, but really, I really do love just shooting just straight DCI 4K and shooting that way. Now let's talk about dynamic range, and of course, we cannot talk about that without talking about the dynamic range boost and vlog. Let's start with vlog first. Um, I'm so happy, and thank you, thank you, thank you, Panasonic, for putting the full vlog in here i think having that because i was never i was i it was okay vlog l but i was never truly satisfied with it especially when considering to something like either black magic's logarithmic uh uh profile or canon's cinema log profiles i found those way more appealing than vlog l so having that full vlog v gamut color space in here in a camera like this uh it's so i i'm so amazed and so happy with it the skin tones look amazing with this camera and you know at the end of the day you gotta love the pictures and that's what i will say and that's what also just amplifies me just wanted to just go out and shoot with this camera and if your camera doesn't make you want to go out and film more then you probably need a new camera so kudos to you panasonic for putting vlog into this all right now let's get into dynamic range boost so obviously this is going to be something of intrigue especially for me since the mechanics of dynamic range boost is pretty much similar to that of the dual gain output sensor of the Canon C70 and the Canon C300 Mark III, as well as how the sensor works on cameras like the Arri Alexa Mini. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, when I first tried out the dynamic range boost, I was not impressed with it. Um, the 2001, the 2000 ISO, which everybody has talked about, it is, um, it is kind of problematic and it's like you really do need some strong in these. So like right now I have the uh, Polar Pro 
Peter McKinnon edition, six to nine stop variable ND. Um, and this actually is strong enough to where I can shoot wide open on this lens, which is the 25, I'm sorry, the 10 to 25, one seven lens. Again, we'll get, I'll get to this one. I'm going to talk about lenses, but I needed almost all the way at nine in order to like fully open this up now. And then if you use something like a speed booster and then shoot something like the Sigma 18 to 35, good luck with that. You'll need even more stronger NDs with that. So yeah, shooting wide open can be problematic. And but that wasn't the biggest issue with me with dynamic range boost. The biggest issue was I kept coming across this, um, these discolorated chroma noise in the shadows. And it was really bad, like really bad. Like even when you put it, like you would have to put some serious chroma denoising in order to get rid of it. So when I first started doing this, I was, I was honestly like, I don't even know if I'm ever going to use it, which would have been a shame because the highlight obviously is pointed out as you guys seen by only many times, the highlight roll off is actually really good. And you really want to use it in those scenarios. But when you get, if you do like a backlit scenario where you got a silhouette, it just ruins the silhouette because the shadows are so damn noisy. So I was about to give up on it until I found a, uh, a feature in the camera, which of course, Panasonic fans, you probably knew this already, uh, which is the pixel refresh. Now you typically want to use this sort of to when you got like hot pixels and something like that, but it's also technically a black balancing uh, system, which is what you do to sort of clean up shadows. So I use that. I actually did a pixel refresh. Whenever I see that, I start seeing it on the monitor here. I do that and it gets rid of it. Like, so not completely, but the image looks way better. Just be mindful if you're going to shoot ProRes, uh, it, the noise may show up a lot more noticeably when filming in ProRes, and that's just because ProRes is the most uncompressed codec option, and it also does the, the least amount of noise reduction. So just be mindful. Uh, if you do H.265, it doesn't show up, but keep in mind, it also you also lose some stops and shadows when you shoot in h.265 because it just it just kills the blacks uh in that compression option so these are just some op things you want to consider but once i did that uh i i actually grown quite fond of the dynamic range boost mode and i love just filming that uh and it, so now I'm happy to just, I'm now happy and I'm okay to backlist something. Now I know, um, I know there's been recently a video came out talking about shadow streaks. Um, so I want to at least address my experience with that in terms of if I've experienced it. Um, and I will say is no, like I said, the only thing in terms of shadows I've experienced was those chroma noise from the dynamic range boost mode. But, uh, in terms of like shadow streaks, I have not come across it in my experiences with it. And in terms of the dynamic range itself, it's good. It's solid. Is it going to be something that blows you away? No, but it will, it, there's a definitely enough that you can get your job done. And honestly, if you're working, a, if you're a working professional like me, even in a grab and go, using something in grab and go, and you're trying to get the best quality at the end of the day, it's all about control and lighting anyway. So you should be trying to manage and trying to light your systems properly. And it's, even in a setting like this, you should still try to light and light correctly. So no excuses, light, light your scenes. Now, obviously what is, how about this compared to the C70? Uh, 
the C70 still destroys this. In terms of image quality in general, outside of the higher resolutions, so this will give you sharper images, this gives you higher frame rate options and multiple options and anamorphic modes, which I'll get to later um, in the video. Uh, but, so those is yes, but in terms of just like a good solid 4K image, I still prefer the C70's image over the G86. The dynamic range is vastly, it's at least two stops, if not three stops better than the G86's dynamic range. I love the roll off in the shadows, and I also love the codex on the C70 more so than the G86. Um, with RAW and MXF AVC versus uh, the H.265 files and ProRes, H.264 and H.265 and ProRes. I prefer the H.265, the MXF AVC, and the RAW codex in the C70 over the ones I mentioned in the G86. And one more thing regarding the C70, it's even still a better low light camera than the GH6. Even whether if you use the Super 35 that's built in or you throw a speed booster on both, it's still a vastly superior low light camera than the GH6. So overall image quality wise, regardless, it, it, without even getting into some of the other benefits of the, G, of the C70 over the GH6, so I just wanna just get that out of the way right there. Now let's go into probably the main reason why I got the GH6, and that is because of its ability to shoot open gate. This may seem like a silly reason why I would want this for especially, you know, I could have got an R5C that does have, it definitely has a better dynamic range, it has a better image, it has better codecs overall in general than the C70. It has not as good frame rates, but it's still a roughly same thing in a bigger, and it has a bigger sensor and it's better in low light. I, so I could have got with that. But the one thing I, 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 I'm looking at Canon, I'm looking at Sony and the open gate is a crux for me with those cameras. And the reason why I bring that up is because uh, you really don't think about it until social media. Uh, the fact that uh, you can shoot 4.3, which is something that I think is starting to come back more with these odd aspect ratios that we used to shoot on uh, back in the old days, like 4.3. And, but just having that ability, because you can always shoot 16 by nine. You don't lose anything. It's not like you crop into 16 by nine. You still get the same full sensor readout going to 16 by nine or even 17 by nine. But just having that ability, I can move it and I can redesign the project that I'm on for multiple platforms and multiple deliveries with one shot. So I can now shoot 16 by nine and lose no information when delivering the YouTube. But then I can also then deliver also on a project that's a one by one for Instagram and only you lose like, I think 15% of the image going to a square, uh, going to a square image and delivering that, which is significantly less than cropping into a square on a 16 by nine, which you have on the Sony and the, or 17 by nine, which you have on the Canon. And even shooting something like nine by 16. So I could shoot nine by 16 like this and I could still open gate. If I wanna shoot nine by 16, I still got that whole width, but I still got more information. I can decide on how to move it in post so that's a lot more options for me. But even if I just shoot normally and deliver to a nine by 16 uh, vertical delivery, I can still get way more information out of that versus shooting on a 16 by nine image and then going to nine by 16. You lose way more doing that. So 
just having this one option of shooting open gate opens up all the different delivery possibilities, which is why so many people shoot open gate on things, on these newer, larger formats like the Confinity and, or even the S1H. I wish, uh, obviously the this, this cinema cameras outside of the R5C, they're all 17 by nine sensors. So you can't really, there's nothing you could do, but the R5C, the R5, the Sony cameras like the A7S3, the FX3, uh, they're all three, two sensors, but for some reason that you can't shoot open gate. And I think that's such a big missed opportunity. So yeah, uh, Canon, Sony, uh, even Nikon, uh, open up, give some open gate options. So, you know, we can get more creativity with it, but there is a downside to shooting open gate. And that's because you have to shoot H.265, which leads to probably one of my biggest cons with this camera is, and this was a big con of mine with the S1H. And it's again here, I would hope at least on PC, that this would have been not as an issue as it was then, since we've had uh, some time since I reviewed the, or not reviewed, uh, first impressions of the S1H. Uh, but no, the H.265 files out of these cameras are horrible, which is crazy because the H.265 files out of the C70 works great in DaVinci Resolve. It works great in DaVinci Resolve, but these, these things are like super sluggish. As soon as it hits, it like just goes dead. Now, obviously if you're shooting on like one of the new Mac mini silicon computers, you're not going to really have that much, especially if you're doing Final Cut, you won't have that much issues, but I'm not going to go out and just buy a whole damn new system just so I can go to with this codec. Now, thank Let's thank the Lord for black magic. Thank you, Grant Petty, for dropping Resolve 18, but more importantly, you gave us something called the proxy generator. That thing is a savior. Thank you, thank you. So essentially now I just do a watch folder of whatever folders I shoot when I'm shooting in that open gate mode or I shoot in any mode that is H.265. And I basically put it there and it basically creates a proxy and the workflow is basically just seamless. So thank you. Thank you, Blackmagic for saving Panasonic for that. All right. I know this one is already going as long, so I'm just going to quickly go through the rest of it. Uh, Ibis, uh, really good, really good. It's great handhold. Uh, definitely if you're going to just get static shots, which is mostly what I like doing with this, use the boost mode. It's so much better. So use the boost mode with that, but you could, but even then turn it off. Uh, it's still, Ibis is still really great. The seven and a half stops, even with a lens that doesn't have Ibis like this, the 10 to 25, which by the way, I'm so mad. I didn't have this, uh, when I was at Disney world because just logging around the Sigma 18 to 35, uh, with the, um, with the speed booster, it was fine, but I, the weight was just getting to me, especially since we were walking all day. I was really starting to feel the way as soon as I, this, and this came in literally the day I came back from Disney world and literally I put this on and I did a quick test with these and I immediately was like, oh my God, I love this. I'm, and I haven't looked back for, since. And what I love about it, again, this is fully weather sealed. Great, great lens. All right. Um, all right. Let's talk about autofocus. Um, it's a contrast detection autofocus. So look, is it reliable? Not really. Not, not to the point where I would trust it to just do everything. It, however, I will say, and I will be frank, it is probably way better than any of the other ones that I've done, I've ever tested. Certainly miles better than the S1H. Uh, this is probably their best performing autofocus, but it's still contrast detection. I would not, if I had to sh put this on a sh paid gig where I had to get, I had to make sure I got the shot, I'm going manual focus with this. Uh, I don't trust it. 
Now, if I'm just for myself, just to get some things when I'm doing myself, sure. Or maybe I'm just doing a vlog and I need, I'm just capturing myself. It does simply do well in those fashions. Um, outside of that, uh, I wouldn't trust it. Audio. Oh my gosh, I forgot, I think I forgot to mention this. I love the fact that there's an audio button right here and I love the fact that there's four channels that I can mix in here. Thank you, thank you Panasonic for giving us four channels of audio. Uh, I'm really, really happy with that, that I could just hit a button and go right into it. Let's just quickly talk about media. So obviously they use the CF Express and one SD cards. I really love the fact, again, this is another reason why I love this Type-C. It's the fact that I don't need to actually buy a media card reader for the CF Express card. I literally just have to plug the camera into the computer and it transfers the files at very high uh, speeds. So thank you, thank you Panasonic for that. Overall, Panasonic has knocked this camera out of the park for what it is, which is a Micro Four Thirds sensor. Literally, they put in as everything that they could possibly do to, into this camera to make it work. And literally, I if, when you just need a camera to just go and film, I don't know of any other camera that can give you the amount of options with the quality and image that it can with now that V-Log and V-Gamut, with solid dynamic range, all the buttons and tools and information you need to make sure your shot is right. Like everything is right here in this little body without adding any additional needs. So I really, really appreciate it. But we also have to keep in mind this is still a Micro Four Thirds sensor. And to me, the biggest problem with that is not even necessary if Micro Four Thirds, is Micro Four Thirds even useful? It absolutely is. You can definitely use it. The problem is, is that the lenses that are designed for this system haven't really been up to date outside of like these newer, like, uh, Sumilex lenses that series zoom lenses. I would love to see Panasonic really come with some heavy hitting glass. Some not, not just ones that are just like for those that just want to prowl and walk around, but glass that can really just make people just go, wow. I want to see more lenses that give us wow, like these guys. So, because that to me is the biggest thing, uh, the biggest problem um, with this. It's just the lens system. I'm just, I'm not really that impressed with a lot of Micro Four Thirds, which means adapting um, to other lens systems, which you can do. But I, I'm a big believer of trying to go as native mount as possible. Sometimes that's not some, but that's sometimes the best option may not be, but, but especially you want to do it, especially with something like this, where again, just go grab a shoot without adding any more different things. That's sort of the way I want to go with it. So, and also like, look, large format cameras are also quite affordable right now. Full frame cameras are super affordable right now. And so the competition is heavy. And even those that are not full frame, there's super 35 cameras like the C70, like the Pocket 6K Pro, like uh, the Red Komodo and all these other cameras that are out here. I, I, I don't know, I love this camera enough for me to be like my go-to A camera, like in sort of like serious, serious productions. I don't know if I would, just because there's just so many different options that can give you so much more creative play because they are bigger sensors. However, again, if you want a camera that you can just, that sometimes you just need to just pick up and go, I've been feeling a lot, uh, sorry, I'm gonna get very personal with you guys. Um, uh, race, le recently, I have been very, very um, in a creative funk. And I, I know a lot of us have been in this where I'm just like, I can't get nothing going. And sometimes I just feel also just trapped in this house, especially for the, like the past two years where like pretty much almost one year we were like either mandatory or just by what's going on in the world. We had to be inside the house and 
then the fallouts of that of having us be inside the house think of the way the world is going it's just sometimes i just feel suffocated in my own i feel suffocated in my own house and sometimes i just need to get out and and escape and and breathe and just revitalize the senses and having a camera that i don't need to worry about just going do i have my monitor do i have all these batteries do i have my rig set up do i have my speed booster with the right thing i do i have my right nd filters i literally just have this camera set up just like this and i just go and i just shoot and it's so beautiful that i can just go up and then i just travel with it plug it and it's full. i can go in just travel and i see something and i stop i can pull the camera the camera's fully charged because i've been charging it in the car and just film just go out and film and start sitting down and just getting creative with just what i just capture getting those juices back in just happy to just continue doing what made me love being a filmmaker and that's the best thing i could say about this camera is that this camera has made me fall in love again of what i loved about being a filmmaker it's you it's not perfect by any means it has its limitations being the sensor it is but that's also what filmmaking is it's understanding those limitations and still breaking through them or even turning those limitations into creativity in terms of and and turning them into positivity that's that's the magic of filmmaking so for that i can't recommend this enough Thank you guys for watching me. I know this is a longer video, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know and leave your comments below. And then also make sure if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to subscribe and also hit that bell and stay up to date on all the content. I really appreciate you guys. And once again, thank you so much. And as always, until next time, take care, everyone.